All right, folks, joining me now, Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. And David, it's, a, it's been a pretty good session, obviously, uh, but I think a lot of people have become cynics these days. Yeah. What issues do you see that have to be resolved before you think, okay, maybe the coast is clear? Well, for long-term investors, the coast is clear. The issue you're asking about is this ongoing volatility, and it's not just in the stock market, it's the bond market. Really high levels of bond volatility, yield volatility, interest rates, driving stock market volatility. I don't see the stock market calming down until yields calm down. The tenure doesn't have to go back to 2.5%, mm-hmm. but I think it settles somewhere in the threes and then quits going up and down so severely. So that sounds like it could still be a multi-month process then. Absolutely. It could be multi-month to get rid of the volatility, but some of these great buying opportunities and equities might go away in a few months. So it's interesting because you were ahead of everyone with the with the uh, oil trade, right? And I mean, even with the recent pullback, you know, some of the profit taking or whatever from the election in November 2020, it's been a, up 175 percent XLE. And we've talked about the transition, maybe a transition uh, where these tech names no longer purely dominate I saw where oil now, XLE, went from 2% to 5%. But if you take oil, materials, industrial, those old century names, can they actually come back and have a true leadership role? They can. I don't think it necessarily has to be energy that's the top of the S&P for the next 10 years. But I start with what it won't be, which is tech. Because we don't ever get two decades in a row of the same sector leading. Generally, the top sector one decade is at the bottom the next. Right. Maybe tech ends up in the middle of the pack. I don't know. But I think it's going to be something that is behooving of a kind of choppy market, a range-bound market. So I think of the 2000s when you came out of the dot-com implosion. Obviously, tech was bottom of that decade. But yeah, yeah, energy did real well then, but so did consumer staples, so did industrials. So it's going to be defensives. I'd keep an eye on health care as well. Yeah, health care is acting pretty good. I think it was the best sector last week. I want to stay on oil for a moment. Yeah. Uh, this move by OPEC, uh, I guess, caught the Biden administration off guard, uh, although some people saw it coming. Now there's a, a push in D.C. It's called NOPEC, yeah. where they want to attack Saudi Arabia and these other countries for not producing more oil. Uh, and there's a bill out there right now. It's got we've got this uh, here, a, a recent poll on it. Forty five percent of voters agree that we should go after them uh, and antitrust. I'm worried about this being a slippery slope. How do we tell another nation how much of a product they should produce? OK, well, for, you don't. And it's a garbage poll because there's no way that they're explaining to people what NOPEC means. The question is, would you like OPEC to have as much power as they do? You and I would say, no, I wish they wouldn't. But would you say we want Oklahoma and Texas to be more important? That's what NOPEC should be, is the Biden administration allowing U.S. resources to be leveraged. Right. Instead of saying we're going to sue OPEC in a court, it is just completely ridiculous. It's not our business to tell them what to produce, and it's especially offensive when we could be the marginal producer. Indeed, we just were the marginal producer three years ago. Right. We're choosing not to be right. that leader on the world stage. It's just, it's just absolutely nuts to me. I can't let you go without some stock ideas because you've got some names that aren't in the energy patch. Yeah, we finally were able to get to a price level we like to Lamar Advertising, which is a smaller cap company, but we love their dividend growth for years and years, make digital billboards. Does this have something to do with the midterm elections and all the money that's being spent out there? No, it actually doesn't, but that's an example of how there are event-driven catalysts to revenue right. for the sector, but they've been very stable and non-cyclical over time. Even when they shut down all the highways in our country, they did pretty well during COVID. I used to buy it every year for years right before the big elections. Yeah. I did okay with them most times. Maybe I got lucky. Uh, Simon Property Group. Yeah, that's one that just you got to buy a seven and a half, eight percent yield. It's come down in price. They're collecting rents. Retail's not hurting. You see these numbers last week, Louis Vuitton. But even if people think the shopper is going to slow down next year, which I don't, the fact of the matter is they collect rents. So right. they own great real estate assets with limited leverage. Simon Property is a good buy. Yeah, I got to tell you, so far, the, between what the banks have said this week, the, oh. this morning, and last week, you know, maybe it's the credit cards, maybe it's that excess savings, but we're still spending money. And yeah, that's something people, people, people need to realize. Our society doesn't need motivation to spend. <laughs> we need motivation to produce. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah. Dave, appreciate it. Thank you very much.